Hello, this is Mike Peters with Peters Industry Training and Consulting again. Um, today I want to talk about data blocks and PLC tags. Um, for all of you who saw my first video and uh, I hope everyone now has installed the TIA and the PLC SIM already. And um, let's dive right in into data blocks and PLC tags. So with the PLC tags actually, uh, PLC tag is actually any type of um, memory or inputs, outputs um, that you have in your program. So as you can see here, that's the default tag table. We open it and then um, what you can see is um, you have system bytes and um, first scan um, like status update, a bit that is always true, a bit that is always false, and you have your clock byte, um, and then you have your hertz bytes. And then that's actually pretty good because you can use um, all these clock bytes, for example, to um, set up a timer. For example, uh, as we all know, uh, one hertz means that um, there will be a signal every second. So this this memory bit um, M0.5 for example can be used to um, count seconds um, and then you have all kinds of other stuff here let's see we can create new new ones say um, test one and then what you want to do is define what it is, what kind of data type it is. So a bool actually is just a, a one or a zero, it means like it's it's on or off. Um, but they there are different types of uh, memories or um, data types that you can use for any type of PLC tags. For example, uh, if you want to have um, a scroll down menu here, and then you can see what kind of data types you can choose. It's actually it's a lot. But um, for now, we will stick with the bools and uh, let's say the integers uh, was actually like um, full numbers, like one, two, three. And then you have um, another one that's called real. And then you can um, you can use numbers like 1.5 or 1.6 or something like that. So but let's let's stick to the bool here. So because that's actually um, the easiest to explain. That's just a one or a zero. That's binary. And um, this is what is used for all the inputs, outputs, um, well, at least the digital ones. Uh, if you go for the analog ones, that's that can be all, all kinds of stuff, um, like um, bits and bytes and words and I don't know, you name it. <clears throat> so let's see, um, if we go on program blocks and open it and then you see something at new block if you go on there it asks you what kind of block do you want to create and in our case we want to create a data block so then it asks you um, if you wanna give out the numbers in manual or automatic so if you type manual you can type in whatever number you want and um, if you type uh, automatic, it will always take the next available number that is free. Um, then you give it a name. Um, let's say um, time. And um, that's what we use for first functions in the future. Um, but um, I will talk about functions and function blocks and everything in, a, in an upcoming video. Right now we just stick to data. So let's create it. Uh, we go on automatic. Then here we go. This is data block one times. <clears throat> and then you can um, create different um, pieces of data. In our case, we want to have a um, counter one, and then data type is bool, and then we also want to create a um, time counter seconds and that will be 
not a bool anymore because we want an actual number. So we, we use the uh, data type integer. So, for, so we have created that. And then uh, we can, for example, take a, a reset byte. Um, reset. This should be a bool again. So whenever you did something, keep in mind um, you want to save the project so nothing uh, nothing goes wrong when, uh, for example, the TIA portal crashes because that happens every once in a while depending on your operating system, what else do you have open, and so um, it does it uh, on a regular basis. I'm not saying like all the time, but I'm saying like it happens. So uh, be prepared save your project every once in a while so you don't lose any data you created um, because that's kind of like what you don't want in the first place then as you can see um, I open that up for you here um, you have um, accessibility and visibility for the HMI so the HMI is the human uh, machine interface that is something what we will discuss later in that course but uh, for now you just have to know okay you want them to be uh, accessible and visible in the HMI too because then you can use this um, bits and bytes and data um, to use in your HMI if necessary so the other thing is retain so that means like um, whenever for example something will be shut off um, let's say the machine um, will be shut off um, you have an internal um, memory as a um, SD card on your CPU and whenever you shut down the CPU everything what is um, what is um, checked to retain will be saved on that memory that means like next time you switch on that CPU this data will still be available for you and it's not um it's it's not resetted by 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 switching off the CPU. So in our in our case here uh we don't want to have the reset retained. Um we also don't want to have the counter retained, but we want to have the time counter seconds uh retained. So we, we check that box here and we are good. So it also gives you a stat value, a start value. Um, in the case of a bool, the start value, if you don't um, define it otherwise, it will always be false. And an integer will always be zero if you don't define it otherwise. So, um, that's kind of like what we can talk about when we talk about data and when we talk about PLC tags. Um, what we re really want to do is now create a function that I will do in the next video um, just to use that kind of data that we created already <coughs> and I will also show you um, um, during the video that we need a couple of more data uh, um, in order to, to make that function work um, but we will we will talk about that in the next video I hope that was helpful a little bit um, don't forget to subscribe uh, for more videos and um, tell me tell me if that helps or not and um, we'll go from here. See you in the next video. Thank you.